So this is the Android Learning Path Lesson 4, Properties and Methods. So we're going to pick up um, where we left off in Lesson 3, and we're going to talk about um, this concept of properties and methods and what that means. And for some developers, it makes a lot of sense, or some aspiring developers, and for other um, folks getting started, especially those who haven't um, programmed in any language before, it can get a little bit technical. So properties and methods. Let's try to get our head around what that means. So properties and methods. So what is a property? So a property, generally speaking, and I'm speaking in general terms here, a property is something that describes an object, um, something like color, something like size. My, uh, my code hinting is, is helping me type, which I don't want. So describing an object, something like color, something like size, something like, um, I don't know, the, the on-click listener object. These things are properties or items that describe something. Methods are things that do stuff, do things. So a method example might be on-click or on-load or on-unload. So these methods... I'm just randomizing here. Um, the key is, is the methods are things that are events that are triggered on certain um, occasions. For example, when someone clicks a button, the method that ran was um, this on-click listener was fired. So a property and a method is really just a way, properties and methods are really just ways to help us as developers um, tell the, the, the software that we're writing in our program, tell our program what to do. So in this example, um, we, we created a reference to a button, and then we wanted to set the on-click listener. So the method call is set on-click listener, and then we passed into the method call um, <clears throat> some rules or some parameters, we call them, in these parentheses, and we created a new on-click listener. We could have also done something like this, um, on-click listener, on-click listener, my listener equals new on click listener and then created that listener and then we could have passed this right there so when we when we call a method we pass in some parameters and so all different kinds of objects on the screen all of our UI widgets like buttons and lists and text boxes and things have all different kinds of properties and all different kinds of methods so how did I know that I could set the on-click listener for this button? Sometimes it's intuitive and sometimes it's not. So if you're not sure if you can set a property of, of an object when you're working with Android, you can do a couple of things. One trick that I like, um, rather than looking it up in the reference, which we'll get to in just a sec, is just use your code hinting in your editor. I can say my button and then I can just type in set and I can see all kinds of properties in this list that are things that I can set background drawable, background resource. We set on click listener, right? <clears throat> so I could look down here in an alphabetical order and I could find set on click listener and I can see that I need to pass in an on click listener. So one way to find the methods that you can work with is to use the code hinting. Another way that you can find them is just go to the internet and just look up the reference. So you can go to Google and you could um, search for, in this case, um, button object, Android button object, and what we would find is, is all the documentation associated with an Android button. So because a button is an object, it has its own class files, and it's um, a child object or a subclass of a widget and a text view and another view, and we, look, we can look through the documentation and we can see a big long list of the properties and the methods associated with this object. So all of these public methods are available on this type of an item. So the code hinting is one way to do it, and looking it up in the reference is another way to do it. So the trick to understanding this is when you're setting um, properties, to understand what type of property you're setting and what kind of um, rules you need to pass in. So if I look at this, this item here, it's, it's asking for one, two, three, four different things I would have to pass in the parentheses when I call this set compound drawables method, I mean, excuse me, property. So when I set clickable, it's asking for 
um, one thing. It's a Boolean, true or false. So I would say set clickable, and I would pass in true or false. So some properties have lots of different um, um, complicated, um, excuse me, some objects have lots of different properties you, that you can set that are real complicated and some of them are real easy. Like on, on the button, for example, we can probably set the title and it's asking for a string probably. Click me, I'm just guessing this. And a lot of them you can just guess. And some of them you can't. See, set title is not gonna work. So, hmm, I wonder what's going on. So if I delete this, I go, rats, do I really need to look up in the reference just how to set the title? So if I put set in again, maybe it's title text, my button text. And yeah, it's a little bit of a guessing game, but sometimes it's um, efficient to look up the documents and sometimes it's not. My code hint didn't work there, so I'm trying to figure out why uh, that didn't work. So it looks like just set text. So sometimes you gotta experiment a little bit, sometimes you don't, click me. So now if we ran it, our button would say click me on it because I called this um, method set text and I adjusted the property. So you don't need to be an expert on understanding all the different um, properties and all the different methods um, for every single object that you work with, but you will need to get an understanding um, at some point on how to find out what the available methods and properties are for the individual objects. So that's a little bit about um, how to set the, the properties on UI screen elements like buttons and lists and menus and everything. But what about properties and methods um, that are part of the class, the class itself, not just this particular button? And what I mean by that is some of you might, might have been able to pick this out already if you've done any, any kind of programming before. This button code that we wrote right here is inside a method called on create. So this method here, public void on create, begins with this opening curly brace here and it ends with this closing curly brace there. So this is end of on create method and this is beginning begin of on create method. So this method here is what we just did our programming inside of. So this method is part of this class called my home screen. So we are oftentimes going to write our own methods. For example, um, maybe we had a method called on button click, right? And we wrote a method called on button click and nothing was passed in and nothing was returned. And instead of writing this code right here, which I'm gonna cut out and I'm gonna add it inside of this method. We wrote our own little method called on button click. And instead of writing our own little code, or instead of using that code here, we could say this dot on button click. So there's a lot of different ways that you can write code. Interestingly, why did this dot on button click produce an error? Can anybody guess? Haha. -ha. So the reason that this dot on button click produced an error is because we didn't describe this method up here in our class files definition up top. So I'm just going to remove the this. And again, I'm not trying to get into Java programming, but the point I'm trying to demonstrate is, is you're going to create your own methods that you can then call from other parts of your code. And the reason that this is important to understand is because there'll be lots and lots of different methods um, that you call from lots and lots of different parts of your code all within the same class. So you could call this button click here or this button click here. We'd probably be better off naming this method um, load home screen. It's a little bit more descriptive, load home screen. And so that way, here we go. The load home screen method will load this intent. So the name of the method helps us as developers understand what's going to happen when that method is triggered or called. And the reason that this is a set of empty parentheses here is because this method does not take any parameters. So sometimes parameters are called arguments, but you can add a list of arguments or a list of parameters to a method signature or method definition. Um, for example, maybe you um, load home screen and maybe you want to click this button 
And because we have an argument here or a parameter that, ex that this method requires, and it needs to be of type Boolean, so true or false, we have to pass in that argument or that parameter before we call this method. And maybe we would look at this and say something like, if load home screen, then maybe we would do this, else, and maybe we would do something else, right? So there's a lot of different ways to write code and there's a lot of different things that you can do. But in this case, um, that's just a simple example of how to add an argument to this method. So our method was, um, was an empty set of parentheses because we didn't have any parameters or arguments that were necessary to, to, uh, to call the method. So you'll, you'll see lots and lots of custom methods in the, in the code that you may write or some custom code and some custom plugins and all of that. One of the important topics um, that you, you should probably get a little bit comfortable with is this idea of an Android activity life cycle. And what, what I mean by that is, we already talked about in one of the previous lessons, loading a new activity and unloading a new activity. The life cycle of each activity, when it's created, when it's terminated, when it's brought to the forefront, all those kinds of things. Um, you need to know as developers, what stage of that life cycle one of your activities is in so that you can put your code in the appropriate place. So Android triggers or fires some built-in methods, built-in methods in activities to help the developer track the life cycle of an activity. So what I mean by that is, what if we needed to know as a developer when this activity was created? Or what if we needed to know when an, as a developer when this activity was terminated? Android will call methods for us automatically and we can ignore them by just ignoring them or we can take advantage of knowing when they were triggered or called by writing some code. So let's jump back to the internet here real quick and let's try to figure out for ourselves what this Android life cycle is all about, what this Android activity life cycle is all about because it is helpful to understand it. So let's jump online here and we'll go to Google and we will search for Android, Android activity life cycle. Look at that, it's a popular item, it's right on top. So if we go to the documentation, there's a nice document here that discusses this Android activity life cycle and it's very, very important um, for you to understand at least the concept of what's going on. So what happens is when an activity is launched is a method called onCreate is fired and then potentially other methods are fired, like on resume, on pause, on stop, and on destroy. So knowing when those methods are fired helps you understand where you should put your code so that you can accomplish what you're trying to accomplish. So in our example before, in our previous example, we added a button here to the screen, and we did it in the on create method. Okay? And so let's go back to the to the browser real quick and look at these other methods and see how we may want to choose to implement these. So on start, on restart, on destroy. Okay, so on create, on restart, on resume, these are all methods that we might choose to implement. So let's say that we did, let's say that we created, we wanted to take advantage of these activity lifecycle events. Android will trigger these for us just putting, I'm just pasting these into our class file. Android will, Android will trigger these for us. Activity started. Activity restarted. Etc. 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 Activity destroyed. Activity destroyed. Let's say that we put our button code. I'm gonna cut this here and then take it out. Let's say that we put that in on resume, okay? And let's say that we just we um, added that code to the on resume method that Android's going to call for us automatically. What do you suppose would happen to our button? When does our button get added to the screen? Does it get added to the screen when the activity is created in the on create method? No. Does it get created when it's started? No. Restarted? Nah. It only gets created when the when the Android activity is resuming, 
Well, that's a little strange. I wonder what will happen when we run our application this way. Um, when we try to add a button to the screen in the on resume method call. So let's minimize this. Let's minimize this. We'll go back to our simulator. And hey there, it crashed. So sometimes Android won't let you add things like you may expect. And the good news is, is you don't want to go adding widgets to the screen um, anywhere outside of the on create method. Generally speaking, all of your widgets that you're going to add to the screen should be added and set up inside of the on create method. But these other methods are very, very useful. You might, for example, need to understand that the screen was pushed to the back and then brought to the forward again, but the on create method didn't run because Android was managing the screen in memory and instead it ran the on resume. Your code might have um, to understand that. It might have to process some logic or something. So the key here to this lesson are or is is that there are custom methods that you write and there are Android methods that are fired automatically for you as part of the activity life cycle. So that's the key is trying to understand where your code will go is always going to be related to the life cycle.